Okay, this session is now being recorded. Um, this is an information session on some of the MA programs available at the School of Languages, Literatures and Cultures. Um, I'm welcoming Laura McLaughlin and Mel Boland, who will give a presentation to their programs. Laura will give a presentation to the MA Advanced Language Skills, and Mel Boland will give a presentation to the MA in Translation Studies. And um, I will then um, tell a little bit more about a new research masters that we have available as alternatives right now. Um, I'm handing, who would like to start, Mel, Laura? Any volunteers? I'm happy to start, yes. Okay. <laughs> so that's okay, Mel, yes. Handing, handing over to Laura. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Tina. And uh, you're all welcome to this, um, um, virtual postgraduate open days um, today. Um, I hope you can see my screen. Yes. Yes. And um, so I will introduce the um, <laughs> move it. Uh, sorry. Okay. I will introduce the main advanced language skills, um, which is one of a number of uh, MA programs uh, designed to enhance your, uh, uh, your language skills, your understanding of uh, how languages work in a, a number of different contexts, both from a theoretical and also from a professional point of view, um, and also your understanding of the cultures that underpin these languages that you're studying and the relationships and the differences uh, between um, two or more cultures. So the uh, specifically the main advanced language skills um, is designed to help you specialize in one foreign language, although there is a possibility of following modules also in a, a, a second language. Um, we aim to equip you with the advanced linguistic and professional skills that are needed in uh, language related areas um, in, uh, in work environments. And also with the technical skills that are necessary to work in computer aided translation environments, which is what you find more and more uh, in uh, professional translation contexts um, these days. Um, and then ultimately to provide training in translation in a variety of contexts um, in, uh, in the professional field, um, in uh, literary translation uh, and the different um, genres. So the, how is it structured? The main advanced language skills like um, all our MAs um, uh, is a 60 uh, ECTS program. It uh, lasts for 12 months, so from September to August. And it molds the uh, writing of a dissertation, which is uh, uh, worth 30 ECDS. The entry requirements are a level A degree, uh, second class honors with a two, two or equivalent in the language that you wish to study. And then, um, Mm, the, as I said, it's 60 ECTS, 30 ECTS uh, go to the dissertation, and then you have um, a number of modules of 10 ECTS each, each uh, that you can choose from, like translation methodology and text, and this is specifically um, a module designed to work with translations but using a translation memory tool, so um, industry standard uh, translation software. Um, you have your advanced language skills modules, which uh, are designed to, to work specifically in advanced language skills. Um, so um, text analysis, uh, reflection on translations, um, and, uh, and so on. You can choose audiovisual translation, which, is, uh, um, which explores how to subtitle um, audiovisual uh, texts, films, documentaries, interviews, and so on. And this is specifically for uh, students of French and uh, Italian, although um, students of other languages can also participate um, as an option uh, without ECTS. The language and intercultural communication module is designed to, um, to explore how languages operate across cultures, uh, specifically in work environments. So how would you relate and talk to colleagues um, 
buyers, uh, customers, suppliers, and so on, uh, in international offices, in international uh, environments. And then the translation studies module is, that, is a more theoretical uh, module, um, which focuses on the history and development of the field of um, translation studies. Now, um, normally you would choose the topic for your dissertation among Can you still follow me? Okay, yeah. so uh, the career opportunities for students who uh, uh, take this program. Um, many of our students have found employment in a number of different environments, both in Ireland and uh, abroad. Some have gone the uh, freelance way and have been quite successful. successful. Uh, others um, have worked or are working in national and international translation companies, uh, for example, as translation project managers, uh, and not just as, as translators. They also found employment in EU offices, in international customer care, and uh, in uh, marketing centers. Uh, and a good number of them have also progressed to uh, doctoral studies. So if you would like more information um, on this program after today, um, I would suggest that you write to my colleague, Dr. Moronia Niwanian, um, at this email address. Um, and she is the, the program director and will be able to answer all your queries. So I hand over to uh, my colleague, I'm Dr. Sorry, Dr. Amen Laura? now. Laura, could you write yeah. the email address in the chat, perhaps, because your shared screen has disappeared? Oh, well. Yep. Oh, well, yes. Uh, but I'm just. Sorry, I'm trying to stop sharing. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. While you're writing that, I'm handing over to Mel. Okay. Thank you very much. I am not muted, which is good. <laughs> well, good for me at least. Uh, hello and uh, good afternoon. You're very welcome to this. Uh, postgraduate open day session on the uh, on languages, the postgraduate programs that we offer in languages. So Laura has just uh, given you an overview of what is primarily our, our single subject MA um, offering. And we also have one which is geared at students who may have done, for example, a, I'm going to share my screen. I have a, oh, I have, cannot share my screen actually. It's been disabled. So let's see if that changes. <laughs> I'm not sure, Laura, if you can change that to allow me to share my screen. Um, but the MA in Translation Studies um, shares both a lot of modules and also shares the structure with the MA in Advanced Language Skills. So in the MA in Translation Studies, you will take 60 credits of taught modules. And let's see if we can do it now. Thank you. I am going to take this and I'm going to share and play from current slides. So hopefully that's now visible. Um, so in this program, you'll see the code, which is GYA42. And the MA in translation studies is, as we said, geared primarily, but not exclusively at uh, students, for example, who would have done two languages as part of their undergraduate program. So uh, Laura has mentioned already there the translation studies module, and that is the spine, if you like, of our MA in translation studies program, and is also available across our school. And in that uh, in that module, as you'll see, which is our, our core module, uh, this will be an introduction to the history and the development of thinking about translation and the development of an area which is now called translation studies. So this is a separate uh, independent, but also as you'll see, if you're interested in the area, it's also what we would call interdisciplinary because it interfaces or it speaks to a lot of areas. So if you're talking about literary translation, which Laura mentioned, you will look at translation studies, you will look at literary studies, and also maybe even the idea of the reception theory, in other words, how books are received in this way. Alongside this, you will take two 
of the five languages that we have written there. So we have French, German, Spanish, Italian, and well, Irish. And primarily, you would, excuse me, typically you would have a BA degree and le usually level B2.2 according to the common European framework of reference for languages. Those people who are native speakers of any of those languages who have maybe a degree in English are also considered for the program. And if you are in any of these special categories or you don't feel it's quite clear there, please feel free to get in touch with me at the email address at the top of the screen. So you will work on both these languages. So it's, 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 it's interesting that you can actually take both of your BA languages, for example, if this is the program you come from, uh, onto master's level. And you can also, in a, in a sense in this program, major and minor in, in your languages. In other words, if you were, let's say, a French and Spanish graduate and you were very strong in French, you could consider you know, not only your French language classes, but you could also then take a dissertation and look at that focusing in on French while maintaining your Spanish and developing their skills in that because you would do that all the way through the year. So you would take a total of six taught modules in exactly the same way as Laura has explained for the MA in Advanced Language Skills. Um, and we would also offer some of the, some similar uh, additional modules as, as well. And that will change from, from year to year. So you carry on with your languages throughout the year. Your translation studies module is in the first semester that allows you to see some ideas and build towards thinking about a type of dissertation topic. So students would focus in on one of their two languages that they present for, for this to allow for a much kind of more in-depth exploration of this. And a lot of people would take the option of, say, a practical translation, uh, but that's not the only thing that you could do for a dissertation. So it allows you to carry on with your, your languages. It opens you up, I think, to this world of translation studies, which you may not have studied at undergraduate level. And it hopefully, what it, well, what it, what it hopes to achieve is to kind of open your eyes to the, the world and the industry of translation, and that it is not exclusive, you know, an exercise that you did or do in a, in, a, in a classroom. It is much, much broader. And the decisions that you make, the audience that you write for, the impact of that work is something which uh, ripples and resonates throughout the world. So those considerations, we give space for that type of reflection uh, and consideration of that. And you can forge your own path with the area that you're most interested in. So if it was literary translation, if it was something like audiovisual translation, you could also you could also take it with that. So as I said, aside from the two subject language graduates, we also do consider uh, people with other profiles. So if please feel free to get in touch with me either in the chat or privately through a uh, through email, and I'd be happy to answer any queries that you have. So as I said, we're broadly dealing with the expansion to development of this area, the integration of whatever translation studies is into some of your own expertise and knowledge already. You carry on with your two languages, and you will also then develop your research methods and, and produce a dis dissertation based upon, um, based upon the studies that you engage in. So that's broadly the the overview of the MA in translation studies. I'd be happy to take any questions that you have, but otherwise I'll pass you back to my colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mel. Um, I just saw that also we're joined by Susan Folan. Susan Folan is the um, MA coordinator for the Akative, and the Akative also has programs in um, translation and conference interpreting that she would like to present. Handing over to you, Susan. Hello, everyone. Can you see and hear me okay? Okay. Yep. Okay. Good. That means the edgy room in my office is working. Uh, I don't have any slides to share with you, but I do have my email address, which is susan.fullen at nuigalway.ie. And if you can't reach me there for any reason, there's a general inquiry email address as well, which is interpreting at nuigalway.ie. I in my other role, I'm a trained conference interpreter. So I work between the university and the European institutions who would be my other employer. And all of the other lecturers who teach on our program here at NUIG are also professional conference interpreters. Some working for the German government, others working for a broad spectrum of companies under the auspices of IEC, who are the 
International Federation of Conference Interpreters, some working on the private market, some working for institutions. So you can rest assured that the lecturers on the program don't just know what they're talking about, it, but they practice what they preach as well on a regular basis, which is nice. It does impact our timetable somewhat with people coming and going, but the program itself is an intense full-time course. So it's good to be upfront about that. You will be practicing from Monday to Friday, probably nine to five, and then even a little bit at the weekends because it's a one-year program in conference interpreting and all of the others in Europe are two-year programs. So this is very intensive, but you also have great facilities and technology and the opportunity to practice with a very multinational dynamic group of students who are practicing the same thing. So many of our classes are practical. You will be in the suites here working and training as a conference interpreter. And it's a little bit like learning how to drive. So what you do is you come to us with your languages, just like you go to your driving instructor with hands and feet, and then you look to put them all together through practice. And anybody who's ever learned how to drive or learn the musical instrument knows how rewarding and how frustrating that can be. And it's very much a case of practice makes perfect. So we're a very practice-based program. Most of our practice is focused in your simultaneous and your consecutive models. So we start off with consecutive, which is listening to the speech in one language and rendering the speech in another. And we do that initially without the use of notes with very short, simple speeches. We gradually introduce note-taking techniques. And then once we've got a solid foundation in that, in listening to the speaker, understanding what they're saying, analyzing what the message is. We then work on you with the reformulation in the other language. And later we put that into practice in sped up mode in conference interpreting booths. And I'm sure you'll have seen conference interpreters before with a headset a little bit like this in their little glass box. And if not, I would really encourage you to try to take a look at a conference interpreter in action before you ever sign up to a program on conference interpreting. You really need to know what the professionals do so that you have a bar then to set for yourself while training so you know what standards you need to get to. In terms of entry requirements, you need a minimum of two languages. So for some people, I'll give an example using languages, that might be French and English. So their mother tongue might be English, but they have a very strong level of French. So they work not only from French into their mother tongue, English, they also work from English back into French. You need a very high level of French for that, something that cannot possibly be achieved without immersion in the language. However, you also have interpreters who work solely from their foreign languages into their mother tongue, in which case you would need French plus Spanish, so you would go from French into English and from Spanish into English. So you have a complete understanding of your, what we call passive languages and mastery of your mother tongue. So you would express yourself in your mother tongue only. On the current program, we have English, Irish, French, German, and Spanish. Last year, we also had Italian. And depending on student numbers, there is a provision to add additional languages if we have sufficient numbers. So we've had inquiries before about Portuguese, about Polish, but about Russian, but we've only had one or two every year. So that was insufficient numbers, but I wouldn't rule out adding those to the program provided we had sufficient interest to then go and employ a professional conference interpreter with the skills and with those languages as well. So we participate also in mock conferences with our partners who are the European institutions for the most part. So you'll get to meet interpreters who work at the commission and the parliament. We also have strong ties with the United Nations where some of our graduates are working. Some graduates are also working with national governments, as I've said, and there's a very, very strong network 
and community, which is really nice to see with the masters as well. So if you ever had a question that you didn't want to ask via interpreting at nygalway.ie, if you use the hashtag 1MAC1, you'll reach out to graduates. And they're usually very forthcoming about their experience, what it takes to get your qualification, what you should look at before you apply to the program. And once you apply, entrance or entry to the program is granted not just by your uh, admission portfolio, which is a 2-2 in your primary degree, which doesn't have to be languages, but you do need to have languages, whether from your home or learnt as second languages outside the home. Aside from that, we have an interview. So we get to know your motivations and your comprehension of your languages and your ability to express yourself. So entrance to the program is based on interview and we have 12 uh, places in the program each year. So interviews take place on a rolling basis and the provision of languages are the same. There's plenty more information available online on 1MAC1, Masters in Conference Interpreting. And don't be afraid either to have a little look around the profession. And that you'll find with another hashtag online, the number one NT. So like an abbreviation of interpreter, int, but the I is replaced by a one. And you'll see lots of students, of lecturers, of practicing professionals, and get a feel for the kind of net works that you build up in the profession as well. So that's all for me and I will put my details in the chat. Thank you very much Susan. So um, just to complement these programs or the introduction to those programs, so for the first time um, we will also have another um, new set of programs available that we call research masters uh, or structured masters um, and those will only start in September, so we didn't have them before. And these are especially interesting for um, students who are interested in a PhD. So they are excellent preparation for a, a career in academia or to undergo a um, PhD program, but they can also stand for themselves. Um, so as the name says, research masters, um, in those, you would combine uh, a longer master's thesis um, where you would really study uh, in a kind of more of a self-organized um, way with a smaller, um, a smaller set of taught modules. And the taught modules available would be modules on research methodologies or um, programs um, that you can take from the other master's programs. So for example, master, uh, modules in advanced language skills would be available to complement your own um, uh, kind of research project. And for this project, you would um, already think about um, an area you are interested in and you would get in touch with us and we would match you up with potential supervisors. And you would then ver work very closely with those supervisors and um, would start working in a very organized way at your thesis. And um, there are accompanying um, thesis writing workshops that go with it. Um, so this is really, um, really a good option for those interested in German literature, French literature or cultural studies, Spanish or Italian. Uh, classics uh, who already as an undergraduate student had a huge interest in their own um, research projects and they would be supported um, in that um, endeavor uh, in, in a very kind of close, uh, close supervised way, but without the additional um, workload of taught modules, so that would be reduced accordingly. Um, if you have questions about that program, I'm available to respond uh, to them. Now, there are only very few students here, so perhaps it would be good if you would tell us what it is you're interested in, and then we can use the rest of the session to give you more um, detailed advice on the program you are actually thinking about uh, applying for. Hi, I'm Anne. Hi, Anne. Uh, how are you? No. Um, I was I was interested originally to um, in translations, mm -hmm. um, 
but because I was thinking about moving to Portugal, so I wasn't, I, I mean, I don't have, uh, I've only, I have basic, I suppose, Italian and English. I don't have Portuguese, but I was planning on studying it in, in January. I don't, with the, with the view of going to Portugal to, to work, uh, to work for, on translations, work for a company. I'm not really sure, to be honest, but that's what, why I, why I done the diploma last year was that in mind. So yeah, I'm open to, my problem is I don't think I could go to Galway. I'm in Wexford, so I, it has to be online or, or at, at least blended anyway that I could go up once a month or something. I mean, I have every weekend off I'm working at the moment. So I'm not really sure where I'm going, <laughs> looking for inspiration. Yeah, that would be a bit difficult. So for example, in the advanced language skills, we have modules like TRADOS um that would then normally be taught uh, in a language lab because the license um is purchased only for uh, language lab use it's very ex expensive to buy them for an individual student which would be necessary if we move it remove it from that pla platform so i think the covid experience has shown us that it's easier to include hybrid elements in courses but we would not the full the full course um online at the moment yeah ma level um yeah so that's me out then <laughs> yeah sorry about that um well i just said i'd hop on here and see um see what way what what you what information i can get so because mm. i remember last year laura um uh there was the follow-up from the diploma there was the advanced italian online but i didn't see it at this time um not uh, at any i go away there, there is no uh, uh we have a beginner's level and we have an intermediate level uh diploma we don't have advanced italian um online for a, um, a diploma level unfortunately we have um, would I be going would I be I'd be doing the intermediate then wouldn't I Laura then I, if you've done the beginners yes then uh, you can progress to the to the intermediate level yeah okay so that's what I need to do um yeah and that that is available online it is available online but again it's a, it's uh it's the same level it's a, the diploma is always a diploma it doesn't progress on to a, a master's um, or to a degree so it's the same uh kind of certificate that you get at the end of uh, the diploma except uh you move up in language knowledge because you work uh, towards an intermediate and it's a good intermediate level yeah so, yeah, yeah because and that's uh, that's done entirely online yes yeah i might do that because i know last year was was uh, apart from covid was a really really rough year for me and i couldn't i, I was disappointed with my results so now that's all behind me. Maybe I could, yeah, maybe go at that again and get a better result. And you okay. know, well, applications open in uh, in April for uh, for the diploma, so you can look at. And if you finish the uh, the beginners level, you don't need to do an entry test. You can go straight into the, the intermediate level. Yeah. Okay, and would that would be one year or two years? Two years. Two years. Okay. Because it's part time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. I, I suppose I'll say goodbye to you then. Mm -hmm. I know good to you here. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. <laughs> nice seeing everyone. Time. And um, yeah, this can, maybe I'll get into the translations in a different way. So. <laughs> Hi. Um, my name is Jane, and um, I'm interested in both either translating or interpreting. Um, and my um, target language is Gaelga, and um, I studied in the Akadov um, Diploma of Gaelga, and um, his focus on the language in, for example, um, in the media and um, use of Irish language in the media, uh, Irish language for, for media, and um, um, for example, press statements and pre uh, functional learning the language for functional um, use, like press statements and press releases, mm -hmm. um, use of very impersonal language and um, free verbs and um, um, writing press writing press releases, press statements, and um, for radio, etc. And um, 
that's where I learned my um Koyoga most recently um with the Akadov. Yeah. And um yeah, I'm just interested in learning. I'm um, interested in learning more um natural kind of style of learning. I think you talked about capturing the message first before reformulating the message then at the next at the next stage. And um um I'm just um curious to learn more about my level and how I can um capture the message and um, for somebody in a different level or on a higher or lower level than me mm -hmm. and um um relaying the message then that way um in in um translating our our con uh, conference interpreting um either or and um, yeah. that's, that's as no. far as i know at the moment yeah yeah but um you may have seen that susan had to leave yeah. the oh, okay now, but you can you can get in touch with her later on but yeah uh, yes. tell you already is um are you at the moment exclusively um kind of translating between english and gilg or would you have another uh, yes um for um maybe for more applied conference interpreting more french and okay. as a third language and for written um translating more um the language would be german maybe this is my third language uh, german okay well that's very interesting so you do have quite a good range here and you would have yeah. classic career prospects with that set of yeah. languages um yeah it's interesting thanks for the information do you do you see a future like in, in the area of conference interpreting or with brussels or as a work yes group? um um yeah either conference interpreting or translating um yeah either so language that, in that context, I would assume, like, you know, that the active does interviews, so you cannot be sure um, that you would actually get a place there. It would depend on your interview performance. So therefore, you could apply for two programs and uh, keep the other one as a fallback option in case you yes. don't get in. Yes. One. Okay. Thanks. And so if you want to work with more than just one um, non-English language, I would uh, advise you to apply for the ACADIS program and then for the advanced language skills program um, as a fallback option. Because uh, even though it's not translation studies, um, it has very hands-on applied translation modules incorporated in it. So what we said at the beginning, TRADOS is one of those programs um, that you would get a very, that, that is a professional translation program used in all sorts of professional contexts. Um, and we would give you a very good introduction on how to use that and the mark assessments in that regard. So a lot of the things that um, you learn in the academic program, you would also learn in the advanced um, language skills program. Um, but in that program, you wouldn't have the direct training in conference interpreting. Uh, but still, it would be a, a very useful program with which that you could use as a basis of a career in the areas you're interested in. Um, so that would be my advice to um, apply for both, see if you can get, get into the active program, if not still have the advanced language skills as a fallback option. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and please get in touch with Susan. I'm sure she can tell you a little bit more about um, the program and, and um, how you could best prepare perhaps for the interview. Like you seem very ambitious and you have a very good set of languages uh, that is very uh, sought after, for example, in Brussels and, and uh, with the European Union or also with the, um, the foreign affairs office or the embassies. They are looking for people um, fluent in languages like that. Um, so definitely um, keep your options open and ask Susan how you can best prepare yourself for these um, assessment interviews. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is no other student here, so I don't think we have to drag out the full hour of the session. But um, if one of you is watching this later and uh, is sorry that they have missed the session, um, please get in touch with us either way. And um, you saw our email addresses at some point on the slides or in the um, chat function. Uh, since that's being recorded, um, my email address is tina minus karen dot um, puse p u s s e 
at nuigorway.ie. And um, in whatever program you're interested in, please just get in, get in touch with us per email and we will get back to all of your requests. Thank you very much. Okay, so I think that's it. Yeah. I mean, it's we're not recording now, are we? Well, I, I stopped the recording.